this is lecture 11 of condensed matter physics one and this week we have been talking about mesoscopic systems and transport at that level. Yesterday, I introduced you to uh, metal clusters, then Coulomb blockade and quantum of conductance and what we learned there was that the conductance of a nano wire so to speak came in the quanta of E square over H times a number an integer and that means I can see that the resistance comes in the quanta of H over E square. this is the quantum of resistance and where do we see it very clearly it is seen in quantum Hall effect so let me just tell you what the experimental facts are about quantum Hall effect. First, one works in terms of a 2 D electron gas. So, I am making this diagram schematically and let a current I pass through this when that happens and you apply a magnetic field perpendicular to it. So, this is a magnetic field this is current I you develop a Hall voltage across the sample. This is the experiment and what we had done earlier that R H which is the Hall coefficient came out to be minus 1 over N E or also the Hall resistance came out to be B over N E I am not worrying about the sign right now. Now, I want you to recall before we go any further that resistance and resistivity for Hall effect. Uh, so, in effect what I am talking about in proper language is Hall resistance and all resistivity are the same in 2 D. This was done in lecture 3. So, you do this experiment and usually what you see is that if you plot all resistance versus B this as I said is B over N E. So, it goes like a line it increases linearly. So, that is fine this is classical a 
all effect. However, when you do experiments at very high B, something dramatic happens and that is this B of the order of Tesla, maybe 10 Tesla and you are plotting Hall resistivity which I will call rho x y. If you do not understand it, please go back to lecture 3 where we did this and here initially you will see there is some small you cannot really distinguish, but at very large b these are the kind of steps you see that step size decreases and the resistivity comes in the quanta of h over e square 1 over nu where nu is an integer. So, you would have nu equals 2 here nu equals 3, nu equals 4, nu equals 5 and so on and then the step size decreases, but this quanta is is h over e square and this happens at very large b as you go to small b you just see a linear behavior and compare this with classical behavior which was like this shown in green. something more dramatic happens if you measure the conductivity, the conductivity shows maxima right at the middle of these plateaus. So, if you have to plot rho x x it is 0 and then goes up here right at the middle of these. So, one needs to explain this. explain why this quantum Hall effect takes place and what is quantum about it? Quantum about it is that rho x y that is the Hall resistivity is h over e square and to a very high precision this nu when nu is an integer and in the plateau rho sigma x s the conductivity is 0. So, we will explore all this and try to understand why this happens the explanation is quite simple, but the phenomena is so rich that it has given rise to many many things and further one has also seen fractional quantum Hall effect which we will not be going into in, in this course because that requires understanding interacting electrons also. This can be explained through non interacting picture. So, first what I am going to do is review what we know about Hall effect. classically and then we will connect it with quantum picture. You will have to keep going back to lecture 3. Uh, so, recall from lecture 3, this is all a review of that. So, what I had done there was that shown that in this geometry that I have made earlier j x j y is given as sigma naught over 1 plus omega c tau square 1 minus omega c tau omega c tau 1 times e x e y. If I go back to the geometry what I am considering is this geometry where we applied a field on this two dimensional gas and there is this E x. Then there the, 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 this is the kind of currents you get here 
sigma naught is n e square tau over m. And from this, one can also calculate the resistivity tensor So, I am going to call this the conductivity tensor sigma x x, sigma x y, sigma y x, sigma y y and inverse of this is going to be resistivity tensor rho x x, rho x y, rho y x, rho y y such that if you take E x E y in such a sample will come out to be rho x x, rho x y, rho y x, rho y y times j x j y. Omega c here is the cyclotron frequency which is E b by m and for a field of 1 gauss it comes out to be 1.6 times 10 raised to 7 for b equals 10 raised to minus 4 tesla. If you go to very high fields omega c becomes very large and that is what we want for observing quantum Hall effect. So, for example, if you take b equals 1 tesla then omega c will be 4 orders of magnitude higher 10 raised to 11 radians per second. So, what we have written is that in this Hall geometry I have the sigma matrix which is sigma x x, sigma x y, sigma y x, sigma y y and rho matrix which is sigma inverse matrix which is equal to rho x x, rho x y, rho y x, rho y y. So, I would like you to do something here derive rho x x, rho x y, rho y x and rho y y in terms of sigma x x, sigma x y, sigma y x and sigma y y and more importantly show that sigma x x equals 0 also implies rho x x is 0 or similarly sigma y y 0 is rho y y 0. And what that means is that in Hall geometry or Hall experiment 0 conductivity implies 0 resistivity. It is very strange, but we will understand that. I want to work in the limit of omega c tau much greater than 1 just to just to make life simple and to give some physical interpretations, but you show it in general. So, I am going to work in the limit omega c tau much 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 greater than 1 and I will show all this, but I do want you to work out the general thing. In this limit sigma naught over 1 plus omega c tau square will become proportional to tau over tau square which goes to 0 so, omega c tau square as omega c tau goes to infinity. 
and the off diagonal terms sigma x y which is proportional to omega c tau over 1 plus omega c tau whole square times sigma 0 will go to n e square over e b sorry this is no e square so I will erase this this goes to n e over b. So, what you can write in this limit in the limit of omega c tau much 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 greater than 1 what you can write is that j x j y is equal to first term we showed is 0 minus n e over b n e over b 0 e x e y. So, what we have here is that sigma x x is 0 sigma x y is minus n e over b sigma y x is n e over b and sigma y y is 0 and j x is equal to minus n e over b e y j y is n e over b e x the corresponding resistivity tensor this is this is just for completeness you can see it otherwise also is going to be 0 minus b over n e b over n e 0 this is just inverse of that matrix let us understand this physically point number 1 omega c tau is much 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 greater than 1 implies tau is tending to infinity for finite omega c so there is hardly any scattering and then what is happening is if I apply a field in the x direction suppose I have a field in the x direction and there is this b which is coming out then an electron would travel in this direction with v equals e x over b and that implies a current j y equals n e v which is e x over b. Similarly, if I have an e y and the field coming out the electron would travel in this direction it will drift in this direction with v equals e y over b which will give you a current in the negative direction j y equals minus n e e y over b that is what it is. So, if there is no scattering and you have this geometry where you have this plane perpendicular to which you apply a magnetic field which is the Hall system and you apply these fields the current in the x direction in which you are applying the field is 0 and current in the perpendicular direction is non-zero and that immediately tells you why 
the conductivity in the direction of the, the, the applied field, applied E is 0, sigma xx is 0 because current in that direction is 0. Whereas, sigma xy is non-zero because when you apply the field Ex, you get a current in y direction. Similarly, you can see that if there is a current in the x direction, the field is 0 in that direction and therefore, uh, rho xx is 0. So, I will let you think a little more about it. I have explained physically what it means to have the, the rho x x and sigma x x both 0, 0 conductivity implying 0 resistivity and vice versa. So, let me now leave you with this thought about this interpret how both rho x x and or sigma x x and rho x x that is conductivity and resistivity both can be 0. simultaneously. We have discussed this, but I, I want you to think a little more about it. So, that that is one very strange thing about whole experiment. What comes out is that if I look at one of the j, say j x, this is equal to n e over b e y forget about the sign right now or j y is equal to n e over b e x and the resistivity is opposite of that. So, I have e y equals b over n e j x and e x equals b over n e j y. So, resistivity rho x y is equal to b over n e that is the whole resistivity. Now, let us see what happens quantum mechanically or, or in the experiment. So, experimentally one observes that rho x y is equal to h over e square 1 over nu, where nu is an integer. So, if you want to understand quantum Hall effect, so to understand quantum Hall effect or integer quantum Hall effect, we must have n equals e b over h times nu. If you have that and put it in this formula, this leads to this formula. So, our job is now going to be that in this two dimensional system, I show that the electron density or the electron density per unit area because we are doing experiments in two dimensions is going to be proportional to B, proportionality constant being E over H and then you multiply it by an integer. If we can show that our job is done, that shows you that rho x y is going to behave H over E square times 1 over the integer. The other thing you have to explain is that when that happens, that time the conductivity is going to be 0, there is going to be no current in, in, in the direction of applied field. So, this is going to be our job. So, with this background, I want to explain this and I will need a few concepts. So, that is what I am going to do in this lecture and next lecture we will then bring it all together to get integer quantum Hall effect.
one concept that I'll need is that of flux quanta. What you can show is that flux through a ring carrying a current comes in quanta of h over e. So, if I have a ring and I apply magnetic field, the flux through this ring will be equal to n times h over e. So, this h over e we are going to call phi naught or this is quantum of flux. Okay, this comes about because you want a wave function psi should be such that psi at phi is equal to psi or phi plus 2 pi or 2 n pi. So, this uniqueness of the wave function gives you flux quantum. I will let you learn about it yourself. So, learn about quantum of flux. You must have done it in your quantum mechanics course. And second thing that I am going to spend considerable time on is the motion of electrons in a magnetic field and what this leads to is something called the Landau levels and these play a very important role. The Landau levels and their degeneracy plays a very important role in explaining quantum Hall effect. So, what we are considering is here is a magnetic field B uniform magnetic field B in z direction and some electrons are moving in it and this is a two dimensional motion. So, let me make this strip the electrons are moving in it in two dimensions. what will be their wave function and what kind of motion do they perform. Classically I know that given a velocity they will be moving around in circles. Quantum mechanically the motion is going to be defined by the Hamiltonian and the wave function. So, the Hamiltonian for this is going to be P plus E A whole square 1 over 2 m that is the Hamiltonian where a is the vector potential and it has a freedom to be chosen within some gauge. What I am going to work in is called Landau gauge And in this, A is taken to be Bx y. Therefore, the Hamiltonian becomes equal to 1 over 2 m s x unit vector h cross over i d by dx plus y unit vector h cross over i e by d y that is the p operator plus e b x whole square. 
that's the Hamiltonian and you work it out open it up and this comes out to be minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 by d x square minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 by d y square plus e h cross over i m v x d by d y plus e square b square over 2 m x square that is the Hamiltonian and what I want to do now is solve h psi equals e psi and let me write it explicitly. So, I am solving minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 psi over d x square minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 psi by d y square plus e h cross over i m b x d psi by d y plus e square b square over 2 m x square psi equals e psi. This is the equation that I am solving. By looking at this structure and since this has been solved many many times I can immediately make an ansatz for the wave function psi x y is equal to some x part times e raise to i k y this happens to be an Eigen function is by looking at the structure and since I want to normalize the e k y part I will also multiply it by 2 over l y. is to root 1 over L y since this is normalized over the length L y. So, we do that if I substitute this in then I mean I can I can act on e raise to i k y when d by d y gives you i k double derivative with respect to y gives you k square and therefore, what you get is when you substitute minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 x over d x square plus h cross square k square over 2 m that is from the second term plus e h cross k over m and this is all multiplied by x multiplied by x and there is a b x also here there will be a b x plus e square b square over 2 m x square x equals e x that is the equation you get for x. So, let me write it again on the next slide. So, equation for x that I am writing is minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 x over d x square plus h cross square k square over 2 m x plus e h cross k over m b x x plus e square b square over 2 m x square x equals e x. Complete this square and you can write this as minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 x over d x square and the second part I take out 1 over 2 m and then complete the square I get h cross k plus e b x square x equals e x. I can take E b out and write this as minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 x by d x square plus E square b square over 2 m x plus 
h cross k over e b whole square equals e x. This is the equation for a simple harmonic oscillator with the second term on the left hand side giving you the half k x square. So, half k x square which is also one half m omega square x square like term is actually replaced by one half m e b over m square and inside I have k plus h cross k over e b whole square. So, this is omega square and this is shifted harmonic oscillator potential. So, what you have is that if I had this x equals 0, the potential is something like this. where this 0 occurs at minus h cross k over E b and this is 1 half m omega cyclotron square x square this is a cyclotron frequency. The solution for this is very clear. So, the solution is going to be the psi harmonic oscillator and eigenvalues E n are going to be n plus a half h cross omega c. Let me repeat myself on the next slide. So, when we had this system of 2 d gas in which we have applied a magnetic field B in the z direction and I am working in Landau gauge. Where I take A to B equal to B x y, I get the equation where H x equals E x or H psi equals E psi, where psi is x e raise to i k y root 1 over L y and x satisfies harmonic oscillator Schrodinger equation with the potential of the particle being let me make that this is x equals 0, the potential is shifted potential, this is minus h cross k over E b and this potential is 1 half m omega c square x plus E h cross over sorry plus h cross k over E b whole square. this x square will not be there. So, the wave function x is psi x n harmonic oscillator and the total wave function psi x y which is a wave function of n and k is equal to psi n x harmonic oscillator times e raise to i k y and there is this normalization constant square root of 1 over L y. We are taking periodic boundary conditions over k and e 
n k is equal to n plus a half h cross omega c. This is very important to understand that energy is independent of k. Since energy is independent that means it is a highly degenerate. level because all the k values that are allowed are going to be in this level. So, all that k degeneracy energy is independent of k, but you do have k coming in the wave function. So, all those k's are going to come into this and that is the degeneracy. Let us see how that comes about. So, what we have is that is why I kept making this picture of the harmonic oscillator is that the x naught by which this this potential shift is minus h cross k over E b. So, your potential in this strip of metal is centered about here, centered about here depending on different k's. So, you may have a potential like this you may have a potential like this, you may have a potential like this and like this for each k value, this is for each k value. And all these have the same energy E n. So, whatever the number of k values are that is going to be the degeneracy. I want you to first tell me this difference. Suppose this is delta k, what is the value of delta k? So, you have these wave functions which are like this. I have psi n k x y equals psi harmonic oscillator n x e raise to i k y square root of 1 over L y and periodic boundary conditions over L y give me k equals 2 pi over L y and there is going to be an n. So, you have different k values. Now, if the sample size is L x, if the sample size is L x, then k maximum magnitude is going to be equal to h cross k max over E b equals L x that is what it is going to satisfy k max satisfies this. So, k max is going to be E b L x over h cross and the number of levels up to k max are going to be E b L x over h cross times L y over 2 pi. That is the density of k points and let me repeat this point. So, you have this strip with length L x width not width, but L y over which I have the periodic boundary conditions. The wave function psi x y depends on n and k is equal to psi n harmonic oscillator 
x times e raised to i k y root 1 over l y. The k values are going to be 2 pi over l y n and k max is such that e k max is on the negative side, but that is okay. Uh, sorry, h cross k max over e b is equal to l x. So, k max is equal to e b l x over h cross and so number of k points is going to be equal to density of states in k times k max and density of states is l y over 2 pi times e b l x over h cross which is e b over h l x l y. L x times l y is the area. So, this is equal to e b times the area over h. Now, recall quantum of flux phi naught is equal to h over e and here flux through the sample is B A. So, the degeneracy of each Landau level is phi over phi naught or it is equal to B over phi naught per unit area that is the degeneracy of Landau levels. So, what we have obtained is that when I put a sample in a magnetic field B, you have these oscillator wave functions separated by delta k which I have asked you to find out and all of this have degeneracy equals phi over phi naught. The highly degenerate levels. So, you have these energy levels in this n equals 1 E equals 3 by 2 h cross omega n equals 0 E equals h cross omega by 2 n equals 2 E equals 5 by 2 h cross omega and so on and each one of this has these tons of levels. So, all those k levels have come into this and notice that k is negative. So, you have in the sample the electrons having this velocity v equals h cross k over m and in the x direction this wave function. I am showing only the ground state. You could also have the first excited state, the second excited state and all of them are degenerate up to this level phi over phi naught. So, that is one thing that I have tal talked about and Landau levels. Now, let us ask the question what happens if there is a field E applied in x direction in addition to B. perpendicular to the sample. So, what you have is here is a sample 
here is B and you have also applied an E x. So, the Hamiltonian change is so the Hamiltonian now is going to be equal to a P plus E A square over 2 m charge is minus E potential is minus E x. So, this is going to be P over E A square over 2 m plus E E x. So, there is this additional term to the previous Hamiltonian. Work it out that I will leave for you because you are just adding this term and what you are going to get this Hamiltonian as is minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 by d x square acting on x plus 1 over 2 m h cross k plus m e over b m e that is the momentum. So, let me make it look better m e over b plus e b x square acting on x minus one half m e square over b square m is on top minus h cross k e over b acting on x acting on x equals the energy since I have used E for the electric field times x, where we have again taken the wave function psi x y to be of the form psi x x e raised to i k y. So, you have to work it out put it in the Hamiltonian and see all this. Then I can also write this as by adding half m e square by e square twice I can write this as minus h cross square over 2 m d 2 x by d x square plus e square b square over 2 m x plus h cross k plus m e over b 1 over e b whole square times x minus 1 half m e over b square x minus h cross k e over b x equals energy times x. I will leave the rest of the work out for you and what you get from this is energy comes out to be n plus a half h cross omega c minus e over b 
H cross K plus M E over B plus one half M E over B square. You have to fill in the details. So, let me write this again. We have this system in which I have applied a field in x direction and there is this B field in the perpendicular direction. You write the Hamiltonian and everything and the energy comes out to be n plus a half h cross omega minus E over B h cross k plus m E over B plus one half m E by B square. I will give you some work here. Interpret each term in the energy. So, you will have to work out things and then see what it means. What is very important here and that is the important point that the velocity of the electron now which is 1 over h cross d e by d k if I think of this as a wave packet. Now, is in y direction and it comes out to be minus E over B. Since K is the y direction K, so this is in y direction. So, even if you work it out quantum mechanically, what you are getting is that in this system where you have E and B perpendicular E is in x direction and there is B, you have electrons which are flowing this way with velocity E by B, the same as the classical result. So, I have set up a lot of things today for you and I will stop here today by concluding the lecture and then work with these things to explain quantum hall integer quantum hall effect in the next one. So, let me now conclude the lecture by saying that in hall effect rho x x is equal to 0 implies sigma x x equals u implies rho x x is also 0. This you have to interpret. Then quantum mechanically electrons or more precisely 2 d electrons in a B field have quantized energies n plus a half h cross omega c with each level having degeneracy phi over phi naught and 3, if B and E are perpendicular with E in x direction and B in z direction and I have shown these in the lecture, electrons drift 
with v y equals minus e by b exactly like they do in classical mechanics. Thank you.